Hallelujah. So first, we're going to talk about uh, just a little while, a short sermon tonight about the birthing of God's purposes. And the reason I'm talking about birthing these purposes is because these purposes have actually been released already. I'm talking about in the realm of the spirit, but now it's time to manifest. And uh, and the reason I'm talking about this is because God kept bringing me across this one scripture. We can look at it real quick in Isaiah chapter 6. We're going to look at it in just a moment. But he kept taking me to this scripture, and this is not one of those hallelujah scriptures. This is not one of those scriptures to where you're like, oh, I thank God I got this scripture uh, given to me. But in the mystery revival, I spoke this scripture. Uh, God spoke a word of the Lord, and I released this scripture to the church. And it's a very strong scripture, but we're going to look at this in a minute. But I believe this is the restoring of the, the voice of healing. How many know about that with William Branham and different things? There was a voice of healing. It was a healing movement. God, I believe there's a restoring of the healing movement that's about to take place in America. The Holy Spirit very clearly highlighted to me Matthew 13. Come on. And we're going to get into that a little bit later and uh, to relate, be released among us. But I preached this sermon back in the revival. Not this sermon, but the sermon that talks about this scripture. And in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 9 and 10, here's what it says. It says, go and tell the, this people, keep on listening, but do not perceive. Keep on looking, but do not understand. Render the hearts of this people insensitive, their ears dull, their eyes dim. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and return and be healed. First of all, in the midst of revival, after being in revival for over a year, and all the things that God did there, this was not one of those scriptures that you're like, why was God speaking this? And if I would have really understood everything, I would have probably uh, responded differently. But I believe the anointing was so strong, and I do not believe people really initially understood what God was speaking. He's speaking to people saying, you're not hearing, you're not understanding, you're not seeing, you're not getting what I'm releasing. And I want you to know everything that has happened in this transition, everything that's happened, it was spoke a year plus, over a year ago. But people wasn't hearing, people weren't perceiving. Even the week before, uh, a couple of weeks before when God said I'm about to do a grand finale of the end of the end and everything's going to happen and all this is going to happen. When he spoke that, everything just happened that way. And there's no way any one of us could have known that that was what God was speaking in and, and so many words. But he was speaking it in so simple form that we, we, we overcomplicated it. We as a body of Christ are constantly making it overcomplicated. God speaks the straight truth just the way it is, just like giving us milk and candy. And here we are, we're trying to d devour it and try to pinpoint this and pinpoint that. He's saying grand finale. What's that mean in our language? The end. The, the, best, of the, the best of the best all held up to the end. I mean, and that's just exactly what God did. Upon initial observation, it it's, did not seem like a word of great encouragement. Come on. This is not a, encouraging to any way, shape, or form except the end, return and be healed. Come on. But understand, who would want a prophetic word declaring that their eyes are dim, their ears are dull, unless they should see or hear the day of their visitation and return to the Lord and be healed. Return to the Lord and be healed. Right then, I believe we should have moved into a place of repentance, return to the Lord, and I believe everything that he spoke may have moved, may have been uh, another direction, may have. Come on, many times it was a may, hallelujah. Come on, and, and we need to understand that's just the way God is. He doesn't change. He's still speaking the same way. We just need to understand him. But I want you to look at Matthew 13. This is what he gave me for right now. And I believe that that word was spoken, and this word's being spoken, and, and this word is the, this is the sermon that God said he was speaking. And this was the title of that sermon, To You It Has Been Granted. This was the title of the sermon that I preached that day. And this was the first scripture in that sermon. In other words, God says, I'm granting to, for, for you to know all the mysteries. But you're choosing not to see. 
you're choosing not to hear, return to me and be healed. This is what he was speaking. And I got, I, I, I copied and pasted uh, a lot of uh, uh, these things and looked at them from my old sermon just to say, my goodness, I didn't even see it of how clear he would just say, this is the way it is. But look at Matthew 13, 11 through 16. It talks about Jesus' answer to them. And it, to you, it has been granted. I love that. To know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been granted. For whoever has to him, more shall be given, and he will have an abundance. But whoever does not have, even that he has, shall be taken away from him. Are you hearing me? Therefore I speak to them in parables. Because while seeing, they do not see. While hearing, they do not hear. Nor do they understand their case. Come on. Their case, the prophecy of Isaiah. I want you to look at this. I, Isaiah, he prophesied, you keep on hearing. Come on. It's just like the scriptures are fitting and interlocking with one another. I don't think it's strange that God tells me, look at Matthew 13, and he keeps run, running across this old sermon that has Isaiah in it. And we need to understand, we get, we get so much, our eyes are to be blessed because we see, and our ears are blessed because we can hear. How, how many times do you hear the scripture, he that hath an ear, let him hear? We have ears, we have eyes, we just choose whether or not we see or hear. It's because we don't like what we hear, like what we see, that's when we start getting choosy. Come on, it's, it's, sometimes you just don't have to like it. If you like every sermon comes out the preacher's mouth, then you're doing too okay. <laughs> I'm telling you, you got to not like some things. Like, oh, that's a little rough. Oh, that hits home too much. Because we need a fresh rhema word for right now. But I want to I wanna take hold of, of a prophetic word in the midst of this old sermon uh, that, I, that I read. To you has been granted to know the mysteries. I want to receive that. I want to embrace that. It has been granted to us, this generation that we're living in right now, to choose. This is it. This is mine. This is my time. This is my time to hear, my time to understand. So what does it mean to know the mysteries? The Holy Spirit came upon, upon me to provide an incredible confirmation of this message. And that day as I was speaking that message To hear those words, to us it has been granted to know the mysteries. To hear that. To hear that, to us it has been granted to know the mysteries. It's almost like God literally looking down on the earth, looking to and fro across the whole earth and saying, to them that has been granted. They have moved me. Are we moving God as a whole church right now? I don't believe so. But we need to move him. We need to move. And that's what God's saying. Repent. Turn back to me. Repent. Go after me. That's what we need to do, praise God. Within the first two months of me coming into this new ministry, I released a prophetic word and said God was going to do something right there in Litchfield. And he said that all you have to do is turn to the Lord and get back to what brought the revival in the beginning. That's all we got to, any of us have to do. We got to get back to God. It's all about God. It's all about God. We're going to be about God in the morning. We're going to be about God in the afternoon. And all night long, we're just going to be pressing into God in all we can and all the time we can. Isaiah 6 clearly uh, prophesies the spirit of revelation that is necessary. It is necessary, this spirit of revelation, to enlighten and, and open our eyes and open our ears but understand it was withheld from that generation in the bible withheld from that generation of people in order that they could not recognize the day of their visitation do you hear what i'm saying it was withheld from them not to see that, that was their day of visitation i believe people that took it for granted revival we got revival every week Every week, they're going to be there. They don't even advertise anymore. Revival's going to be for every week, forever. And that's just the way it's going to be because God spoke about things that were going to happen 10 years, 5 years, and thousands and thousands, and none of that was all fulfilled yet. So we took it for granted that it was just going to be there. 
And I'm telling you, that's why I'm feeling that same sensing in Springfield right now. The same hunger, the same thirst that's going on in Springfield right now. And that's why I'm telling them it's about their hearts. they got to keep on fire. They don't want to just take, feel like they could take a couple of weeks off and, and go here and go there, especially when they can. They can be there. So many times we just get complacent, we get disheartened, we get dissatisfied, and we want to watch TV, we want to do this, we want to do that. But we got to understand revival takes a sold-out crowd. And I'm telling you, some of you work full-time jobs, and you, you're, so, uh, you're so always here. You're taking time out of your busy schedule. This guy, he came, even came from Georgia just and ended up in those meetings last weekend. We need to understand, it's just the way God's moving right now. You're finding the hungry. We're finding the hungry right now. And we gotta, I'm telling you, that's why I want to so emphasize we can't get off the mark. Don't take it for granted we're going to Springfield all the time. Don't take it for uh, granted that things aren't uh, even in the process of getting ready to pop. It's not going to be in that little 50 capacity much longer. Things are going to pop out sooner than I was ready for it myself. Because I know revival takes a whole lot more than just a couple of sermons a week. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The scripture, the scriptures point out, if they had then, if they had then, all their eyes open and turned to the Lord, the Lord would have returned, come on, and the promise would, they would be healed. And what I like about the word healed is the same word that declares Whenever Jesus uh, would heal people of leprosy, and, and the definition would be made whole. Come on. I believe they would have been made whole. In other words, just like it never ended. Return, and he will heal you. How many want to have that? Come on, we got to return. The church needs to return. How many times has Springfield kind of shrugged off some kind of move of God? How many times have all our cities kind of shrugged off something because it was only a small group or a certain group in a certain church, a certain location? Why does he have to do it in a hotel or in a byway or a hot, you know, why does he have to do it in somebody's home? Why does he have to do it in some odd place when we have all these giant, beautiful churches? Yeah, there's certain people that are hungry. And there's certain people in the church structure that don't want to change. They don't want to shift. We got to shift right now. We got to go ahead and shift everything and say, okay, now's the time. This is the time. I receive this as a personal promise to me. We have the biblical pledge that we do not have to remain in the condition we're in. You don't have to remain dead. You choose to live, choose life. I love those bumper stickers and different things that say choose life. And I know most of them is about abortion. But when I see them, praise God, I'm not just excited about that, that we need to choose life for abortion. But I'm, I'm also looking at that and I'm like, yeah, we need to choose life as a church. We need to choose to live. Come on, not be let down and dismayed. We don't just be just disheartened. Don't just be dissatisfied. And don't try to blame all the other ministries the reason you're not growing. That's not the way it is. It's not about that. You know, a lot of the enemy's plans and schemes are to consume the church, to assume all the other churches are against them. Come on, how many churches all assume this church is praying against them, this church is praying against them? If we could use all that energy and bottle it up, we probably would have the greatest move of all time. Come on. Isaiah rightly prophesied this concerning a generation whose ears were dull, eyes were dim, unable to recognize the day of their visitation. Come on. We have the revelatory assurance that to us it has been granted to know the mysteries of the kingdom. But we can't take it for granted. Get it? It's been granted to us, but we can't take it for granted. We need it. And I'm not going to miss it this time. I believe I missed it. Some people would say, well, you had over two years of revival. God poured it out all the way to the end, even strongest at the very end. It didn't just die out. I mean, at the very last day, it was explosive. Come on. Excitement, crowds, and people falling all over the place. 
signs falling all over the place. And, and, and that's another thing. So many people have come against the signs. And that's why I believe people are having them in their own churches, their own homes, that have come to the meetings to break that. Come on. Because so many people are going to say, well, that, all that was false now and all that. And I don't care what they think, what they find, whatever. There's nothing going to be able to do what God is doing right now. Nothing. No man can be in everybody's home, everybody's church. Come on. Hallelujah. We have our rights in the realm of the Spirit. Our right to see is being released among our congregation. And I don't mean our own ministry only. I believe every born-again believer who's on fire for God, that's our congregation. We might worship in a different place. We might believe a little different sometimes. But we're still of the same bloodstream, the same DNA. Come on. And I'm telling you, we are of the same congregation. I received this for our whole congregation. To us, it has been granted. Understand, it is our right, come on, our prerogative to be anointed in the, with the spirit of revelation that our eyes would be illuminated, our ears unstopped, that we might know and understand the mysteries of the kingdom. Night after night, week after week, God would minister to us and show us his love. But then he put these warnings out there that your eyes and ears are becoming dull. Why would he do that? To pour out all the revelation of what we could understand and what we could receive. But I believe so many of us as a body of Christ get dependent on one man. Even in revival, when revival's happening all across the world, that one person that's in the midst of the leadership, we all kind of look to that man. He's leading us. Understand the revelation comes from the throne. It's not about the man. Hallelujah. I want you to understand what God's getting ready to do in America. The man might not be known, but God will be known. And I'm telling you, we need to get excited about this because we have done enough in this world to make God go to another nation. This nation right here has done enough to make God want to go to another nation and forget about our nation. We have done enough. We've got all our big kingdoms we built. All this man-made ministries. Everybody following us. What about the Jesus that we serve? He's the one we should be following. Come on. In other words, we have the right to be anointed with the spirit of revelation, which brings insight to us concerning the mind, will, and purpose of God in the earth and the unveiling of his kingdom. There's an unveiling taking place. I'm talking about we are birthing. That's what we're going to do. We're going to birth God's purposes. Isn't it time for us to birth it? But understand it's not going to come with a lot of, a lot of discomfort. It's not going to come without some discomfort. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. I can't believe some of the times that he's had me do what are some of the things I've had to do this last four months. But I'm telling you, it's going to be worth it. Hallelujah. One of the things most adamantly opposed by the enemy is the full release of the spirit upon the church. That's what the enemy does not want. Come on. We got to have a full release of the spirit. Our adversary knows that if God's people are anointed with a prophetic mandate to be clothed with revelation, then we would return to the Lord and he would have to heal us. The devil knows the Bible. Come on. He knows that if we return to the Lord, he's going to heal us. Now, in my kingdom, if I was God, I'd say, you know, you messed up. I'm moving on. But guess what? I'm not God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And I wouldn't want me to be God anyway, because guess what? I need, I need, to, I need the one that gives me another, another shot when I make a mistake. And that's another thing. The church right now is so consumed. Somebody said it today. <coughs> so consumed that they think that, that they're all perfect without sin. So when somebody sins in the body of Christ, they write them off. The Bible says we all are sinners. 
Oh, my goodness. That means a pastor could be a sinner? Yeah. I used to love it sometimes, and I never, I never got the revelation. But I'd go to a prophet and talk to him about things and, you know, that I'd be having a problem with as a young man, and I'd tell him, and he goes, this is just your, your price to pay, your thing to overcome. He goes, I have mine, you have yours. I'm like, wait a minute. You know, you're, you're a prophet, an established prophet. You've been a prophet for like 20 years. What are you talking about? I mean, you're not nothing like me. But the thing is, he is. Come on. And we should all admit that we're all alike. Come on. One of the things we need to understand is that healing would not merely consist by physical and emotional re restoration but also fully mending the breach. Because that's what it is. It's a breach that exists between God and man since the Garden of Eden. Come on, promise after promise was given to the Garden of Eden, and there was a breach that took place. We as the body of Christ, we have so many times been granted a season of visitation, and we have breached somewhere along the line, whether it's in some kind of revival in certain places. Come on. Revivals going on in different places, crusades going on in different places, and all of a sudden there's a breach that takes place. Come on. And I don't care if one man makes a mistake. I don't care if one person makes a mistake. The whole thing doesn't have to fall. There's a breach that's made. What happened whenever, and I'm just putting this out there, whether you were for it or against it, there was a lot of miracles and healings that took place in Lakeland. A lot of healings and miracles. Whether you were for it or against it, there was a whole lot of miracles. But also understand, when Todd fell away from it, there was still thousands of people who were on fire, hungry for God, and that should have kept going and kept building with all the men of God that they had at their disposal. They have more of a ministry team than most churches. Come on. But what happened? People begin to fall away. <coughs> Come on. They put one guy. And understand, we as a body of Christ, we do this over and over and over again. And God says to you, it has been granted, but that breach right now we need to repent for. God, forgive us and mend that breach. Come on, that breach in our city, that breach in our state, that breach in our region, that breach in our country, where we have turned away on our time of visitation. Once accomplished, the reality of Christ in us, the hope of glory, is going to be restored. How many want to see that? It's going to become apparent that we walk in the prophetic destiny foretold in Scripture. This is the reason there has been so many and so much opposition to this generation. <coughs> I believe we've had more opposition in this generation than I believe any generation. And I'm not just saying it because I'm living it. But it seems like it. We've got the internet. We've got all the media at our disposal. We got everything we could ever do. Videotaping up from a cell phone. Come on. Hallelujah. We don't have to climb a telephone pole and, and wind that thing anymore. We have all this at our disposal, but yet we as a church have continually fell away from what God wanted to do. Well, one of the things I spoke about in Springfield was he is restoring that spirit of wisdom and revelation. Ephesians 1.17 emphasizes the right of every believer to be anointed with the spirit of wisdom and revelation. This form of wisdom is not merely the ability uh, to mentally analyze. See, we get away from it. Too many people are mentally analyzing the, a situation. Come on. Rather, it's a spiritual endowment of power. Come on. Hallelujah. And much like the lady that was in the service that began to get upset because of the holy laughter, saying they were laughing at me. Come on. It's just that we're all on different pages sometimes. She just wasn't getting it. She's like getting all upset because it doesn't happen in her services. Understand, I'm used to it. Come on. This is nothing. Hallelujah. 
Yeah, she, yeah. I mean, she was freaking out over a couple specks of gold that was on the chair in front of her at the beginning of the service because it's just different. But understand, and it's not just a little uh, wisdom and revelation. Even try to almost there was a belittling trying to take in place of what God really wanted to talk about the supernatural realm. And I'm telling you, we need to understand there. This is a supernatural ability endued with power from on high. Come on. To see and only do what we'd see the Father do. We need this. Come on. And this is a lot of the fivefold ministry that I'm talking about that are just like this one woman. They have boundaries and limitations to what God can do. Come on. I've had so many people uh, uh, get excited. They come to services. They were scooping up gold dust at, and, and just getting all excited to get it on them. And I'm talking about piles of it. And they'd be like, oh, look. And, and they go back and they talk to this one uh, minister and they talk to this other minister and they tell them, this is not of God. So they're like, oh, well, it's not of God. But at the time they were in the service, they were getting drunk in the spirit. They were getting hit with the power of God. They were getting excited, taking pictures, getting in all their little baggies. Come on. But as soon as one man of God, just because a man of God tells you it's one way doesn't mean it's that way. I, over and over and over again, if I heard it from the pulpit and I didn't know about it, guess what I did? I studied that out. I'm like, let's find out if we agree. And sometimes, many times I didn't agree. I didn't leave the church just because I didn't agree. But over and over and over again, I found there's a limitation to what they're believing. Come on. <clears throat> I had one guy leave the church because he, he didn't believe on the spirit, being slain in the spirit. People started falling, and he's like, I believe that's flesh. I said, well, sometimes it can be. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that would have been nice. <laughs> but at the same time, over and over and over again, there's so many that we get to a place to where we don't believe in something, we just write it off. It can't happen now. But understand, I'm telling you, this young man, he's like, can you get me some scripture? <laughs> And you shouldn't tell me that. Hallelujah. Because I'll dig in that word. And I went through the Old Testament. I thought, let's go ahead and hit him with some old first. And I just dug into that Old Testament and would find anywhere where they could not stand, where they were falling back, come on, where they were being hit somehow or another. And I would just say, I, I didn't really go in depth for each scripture, but I just laid them all in a row, uh, about a page of them, and said, here's the Old Testament. Let me know if you need the new. Well, he didn't want the new because he never came back. And I'm saying, I'm saying this because over and over and over again, people don't believe in this, don't believe in that. Guess what? A lot of people don't believe in transporting either, but there's a whole lot of that. Hallelujah. People going from one place to another in and, and no blink of time. Come on. You want to talk about some things you don't believe in, let's go ahead and have some. What about some signs and wonders where fire's taking place right in the middle of us? Come on, it's not consuming anything. You want some signs and wonders, let's talk about some of those signs that are yet to come. You think we don't believe it now? My goodness. Going to have fire departments coming and testing if there's a certain molecule, certain, you know, technique we're using. Come on. It's all going to happen. They're not going to be able to find any fluid, anything that created the fire. Over and over and over again, God's going to blow this world away. Yes, all the time. Not only do we have the right to understand these mysteries, we also have the right to the accompanying of the spirit of revelation and illumination and also the comprehension. See, I don't want to just have a little revelation. I want to have the understanding. Come on. The spirit of wisdom is more clearly defined as a supernatural impartation from the spirit granting the ability to see and to recognize the Lord Jesus and the spiritual knowledge, comprehension of his mysteries his plans, his purposes. See, it's not trying to comprehend what's going on here. I want to understand what's going on there and bring it to here. Come on. The heritage will, will be revealed. The manifold, and I love that, manifold. Unsearchable wisdom and secrets of God that are hidden in Christ. And I remember many times uh, back whenever I first got a revelation of the, the manifold. 
That's when we got, I've said this before and recently, how God just said, say it slower, say it slower, say it slower. And I begin to say many fold, many fold. And, and I'm telling you, that just, that got me excited. Some people later are like, well, I had that revelation. It's like, well, good, I didn't. Many folded. I just begin to think about many folded, and I just begin to think. And I folded pieces of paper, and I try to count the numbers, and, you know, I try to get all those figures, and you can't get it all. I mean, you can't even get all the fold that God's getting ready to return to the church right now. You can't even get it. Come on. Even someone talked about tonight, their tire getting fixed in the realm of the spirit. I'm telling you, God's going to fix brakes. He's going to fix transmissions. Even my transmission, I'm still driving on it. Hallelujah. I probably put 20,000 miles on that transmission, and it wouldn't go into third gear. I never got it fixed. Hallelujah. Come on. I bought the transmission. It's in the garage. Now it's on It's on uh, Craigslist for sale. <laughs> Come on. God finally told me to sell it. You know why it told me to sell it? Because they had a part that they added to it later, months later. Come on, for free. It's just the way God works over and over and over again. blows me away. I remember one, one time I, I, I just gave a general word of knowledge. I said, there's somebody here who needs new brakes. They're going to be, God says, I'm going to heal your brakes. They had a brake light on. And their brakes were rubbing. They drove, drove to the service with brake light on and the brakes rubbing. Hallelujah. A week later, they came back. They said, oh, that was my my daughter. Uh, she took it in, had it checked, nothing wrong. Like, the, like somebody had put brakes on it. And she goes, it had to be God. Come on. Daniel 12, 4. I'm just going to read this scripture because I want to get back to worship. It says, but as for you, Daniel concealed these words and sealed up the book until the end time. Come on, till the end of time. Many will go back and forth, and knowledge will increase. There is much that's been held until the end of time. This is the time for revelation. This is the time for knowledge. To us it has been granted. <coughs> that's why we have been granted. I'm even talking about this next generation, the young people, the children. Man, they're going to be the ones that are riding the clouds. You think we're in the clouds. They're going to be on top of the clouds. They're going to be more of the blessed generation than ever before. Let's go into uh, the last part of this. What are we going to do? We're going to walk in the full measure of Christ. How many want to see men and women of God by the hundreds and thousands and thousands walking in the full measure of Christ? According to Ephesians 1, 18 and 19, it provides three blessings and it's three essentials for, every, uh, uh, for our ability to walk in the full measure of Christ through the eyes of our heart being enlightened. <coughs> Number one, that we may know what is the hope of our calling. We need to know what is the hope of our calling. Number two, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? we got to know this. Come on, the riches of our calling and the riches of his glory. His glory is more than we can ever imagine. We can never put a figure on it. All the signs and wonders I've seen up to this point is no measure of the glory that we're still yet to see the manifest signs. I mean, we have not even measured any glory yet i'm talking about we have had times where the glory cloud was so thick most of the crowd could see colorful cloud just hovering over the entire room come on and in that revival the ceiling i mean i could touch it like this so it wasn't that high to begin with and you got a glory cloud i mean and people were like oh look can you can you see that and most of the crowd could see it i love that I want to get to a place to where everyone is seeing the pillars of fire, the smoke, the glory clouds, all the things that are going to be so clear. And number three, what is the surpassing greatness of his power toward us who believe? The greatness of his power toward us who believe. When we hear these words, our minds recognize the great promise that has been provided for us. Even so, when the anointing with the spirit of wisdom and revelation to begin to obtain, comprehend, and experience the reality of this birthright, 
This is a reality of our birthright. We were born for this. We're a king's kid. As soon as we become born again, we had our birthright. <coughs> Christ in us. Hallelujah. I believe this is my last point. To us it has been granted. I want you to get that in your spirit. Because that is the, the fresh word that is being rekindled. Spoke many, many, many months ago. Like over a year ago was spoke. But he's saying it again. To you it has been granted. We don't want to miss this. That was the emphasis of the Spirit to this particular body and the body at large. To fully apprehend this exceptional mystery. It's a, it's a mystery. To us it has been granted. Why does God grant a certain area? Come on. Why not the area where, you know, they got millions of people that could be one? Hallelujah. Why here? Why in this area? I mean, even if you're going to pick Illinois, why not Chicago? Come on. I mean, it's the Windy City. It needs some God. <laughs> yeah, and a lot of times they, they do the fire start in the middle and go out. But we need to understand why would God, we just got to understand it has been granted to us. We need to receive this. And I'm talking about of this region. To fully apprehend this exceptional thing. And I'm telling you, to us it has been granted to this generation to be anointed with the spirit of revelation, to know and comprehend those great mysteries provided for us through the awesome power of redemption. One of the greatest manifestations that will be fully realized is the wonder of Christ is in us, the hope of glory. We have not yet got a revelation of that. Christ in us, the hope of glory. We don't have it. We're going to have it. I think a small measure of Peter passing by that people will be healed, that's a small measure. How many want to have a measure to where people would line up just to get a glimpse, get a feel of your shadow? Come on. I don't know about you, but I'd love to get on the airplane and get everybody drunk in the spirit. Hallelujah, except the pilot. Amen. Hallelujah. Anymore, they might even fly the, their shell, the plane. I don't know. But, but we, I don't, I mean, it, it's, a, it's getting to a level that we are going to be such carriers of God that it's going to begin to just be contagious. Hallelujah. And I, I, I would, in the, in the past couple of years, I would be in restaurants and different places and begin to have people begin to confess things. Never knew me before. Never knew me on a real personal level and just began to confess how they lived, things they did. Why? Because it's him in me. Come on. <clears throat> we recite the words, but very few of us experience and discover the absolute complete reality. We believe the scripture has has promises that an entire company of believers will soon emerge anointed and certainly walking in the fullness of the greatness of his power, the authority, and more importantly, uh, just radiant. Come on, just radiating, so to speak, just, 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 uh, just a, such a magnificent glory ray coming off of us uh, of the very nature of God. Come on. And that's through his manifested glory. That's the full revelation required of joining together as a prophetic mantle that God's about to release upon the body of Christ. This in itself depicts the emerging, the emerging partnership between worship and prophetic, giving full expression of the heart and the spirit. Come on, we got to understand worship is going to come in and it's going to come in together with prophetic. Come on, God enlightened me on the worship over the past couple of years. And uh, in the revival, I played the big old bongos, hallelujah, in the worship team, hallelujah. And I'm telling you, there's times I don't even, I don't even think I was even touching those things. I was beating them so fast. And I would get so hit with the glory, and things would happen and manifest over and over and over again. One of the first piles of gold dust that manifested during a service just whoosh right around me. I mean, all around me, just whoosh, just came. 
And I'm telling you, while I'm playing, I was just going crazy. And my hands were too busy for anything to be from me. Hallelujah. It had to be from God. Hallelujah. But I'm telling you, it just whoosh came down. And the reason I'm saying this is because uh, today I got a magazine uh, from, a, from a company, and they're in there. Those type of drums are in there. And I'm already looking, already getting excited. It's time to get some new drums again. Hallelujah. We're about to be partners again with God. A real partnership. Come on. A real partnership. And I'm telling you, Elisha was clearly able to, to more readily discern the voice of God. And the minstrel, uh, the, the, even the minstrel, he played providing the, an atmosphere for prophetic voice to flourish. Come on, we got to understand that. There's something about that music, hallelujah. And I'm telling you, there's something about worship and prophetic that's coming together. You're going to see it more and more. And I believe this will amplify in time with some services allowing the worshipers to continue as the anointed word flows through the prophetic leaders bringing the word and the Lord in unison as it overflows through worship. That's why the attacks are on worship. The attacks are on prophetic. Come on. Guess what? There's still a spirit that is alive in the church right now, and it's called Jezebel that's out to kill the prophets. And I'm telling you, there's a, uh, there's a Jezebel trying to kill prophets, and also there, there's a devil that's trying to kill worship leaders and worship teams. And I'm telling you, it's because it's the two pivotal parts that are going to be in this next move. Come on. Don't think it's strange. Hallelujah. So understand, we're about to break out and break in. Why? Because it's been granted to us to know the mysteries. And these are the keys to unlock mysteries is the prophetic in worship. Because the prophetic brings in the glory. Come on. And the worship brings in the glory. The prophetic taps into the glory. Get ready. Hallelujah. Are you ready for this? Hallelujah. We're going to get excited in the days ahead about what God's getting ready to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I, I want to get ready to worship again. Hallelujah. I want to get ready to worship again. And we're just going to press in. Even the, even today, I was preparing the sermon for tomorrow night and the next night in Collinsville. Hallelujah. And as I was preparing, I, I put this on Facebook already. I got one page typed. I've been searching over and over and over, over again uh, what, to, what to preach on. And I ran across Leviathan Spirit. And uh, I was like, Oh man, that's kind of a hard one. That's kind of a deep one. That's kind of that's not just that's not that's not tickle your ear excitement. And uh, this is what he told me to do. And I just began to type, and I got one full page done as soon as I did. My computer crashed. And I'm like, that, that's it. <laughs> that's a sermon. That's confirmation right there. Because I've had a lot of sermons. I type one, two, three pages, and I don't even use them. I just say, well, that ain't going to work. And I go to another another one. And I start typing again. But this this sermon, hallelujah, now I'm on like page 11. And hallelujah. And after the computer recovered. And uh, so it's just, uh, it's going to be, hallelujah. Why? Because it's time to deal with the spirits that are hindering the body of Christ. And one of the, and now there, God's given me some revelation. I believe it's going to be mighty, hallelujah. And uh, so uh, let's just get ready for what God's going to do. He said it, he wanted us to do this tonight. Have some uh, just a little bit of worship and then have a, the preaching and then come back and worship again. And the last song of this worship series is is going to kind of dec decree some things for us as a body of Christ. Hallelujah. Praise God. So let me take a moment to program this and uh, just get ready to worship. Now the distortion. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for all that you're doing. Uh, we give you praise and glory. For what you're about to do in Springfield, we thank you, Lord, that tonight and tomorrow night and the next night is a launching pad. As you said, God, you said that we were on the launching pad of your glory. We're on the launching pad of you taking us to another realm of your glory, God. And so right now in Jesus' name, I ask, God, that you just come and sweep over our nation. Sweep over our city with your presence, God, and begin to show us the real revelation of who you are. Lord, I don't want just to have church in any service. I want you to come. I want you to show us your presence. I want you to come and manifest your glory. And so tonight, I'm asking God to begin to open up the heavens and give us encounters in Jesus' name. And I thank you for all that you're doing. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. I'm going to preach a short sermon tonight in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Uh, that, that's, that's, that's me giving it my best shot to preach a short sermon. No matter if I have 
20 pages or six pages. Sometimes it just seems like that hour and a half or so just ends up happening anyway. Hallelujah. But I, 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 I'm, it looks short to me. Hallelujah. So we'll see. Uh, but what I'm going to talk about tonight is, is getting us ready uh, for the next couple of months. Because I want to get ready. I want us all to get ready. And so what I'm going to talk about tonight is an encounter with God. How many want to encounter God? I mean, really encounter Him. I mean, not just encounter uh, a little goosebump, a little feeling, a little, a little, mm, that feels good. I don't want just a little, mm. I want just a, a mind-blowing, face-to-face experience, supernatural glory in my face to where I know that I know that I know it's Him. It's nothing else. It's not imagination. It's not some kind of uh, uh, dreamland. I want the real deal, visitation from heaven. So what I'm going to talk about tonight is encountering God. I want you to encounter God. And what did Jesus say when Lazarus lay dead four days in the tomb? Here's what he said. He said this, Did I not tell you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? Come on. If you would believe, you would see the glory of God. You know, one thing I like about uh, some people when they say, I don't believe in all that signs and wonders and all that stuff, you know, all that stuff that comes. And, you know, the Bible says that signs and wonders follow them that believe. So if you don't believe, anyway, hallelujah. Signs and wonders follow them that believe. I want you to know that we are in a, in a dimension right now where God is getting ready to do some awesome things, things that we won't be able to even tell people. Come on. I mean, it'd be like, what just happened? I saw, I saw, I saw, I saw. You saw what? Yeah, yeah, I did. I saw it. I saw it. Saw what? I mean, we're going to be speechless. How many want to get the church speechless? Hallelujah. I mean, I could imagine there's been times whenever I felt dead in the pulpit. And I mean, I preached and I felt like there was nothing coming forth. I didn't feel anything. Hallelujah. I'm doing that because I felt like electricity. Hallelujah. But anyway, uh, I felt dead in the pulpit, and I was ministering the Word of God, and all, all, all of a sudden, I began to feel these things rubbing around me, and I just thought, what in the world's going on? It feels crowded. I'm bumping into people. Nobody's here. And I, people come up to me after the service, they're like, man, I saw angels around you. And, you know, and there was one, he comes here every once in a while, and he goes, dude, I saw some things. I'm like, what? And he spells dude, D-O-O-O-D. <laughs> Dude. But anyway, <laughs> it's like I saw some things, and I never—I still don't know what he saw. He won't. He don't know. He's like I saw some things around you, dude. <laughs> and he's a Christian. He loves the Lord. He's just uh, got that hippie personality, and there's nothing wrong with it. Hallelujah. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with it uh, as long as you don't, don't have the, the, the substance with it. But anyway, <laughs> what is the glory of God here that, that I just talked about? It's people being raised from the dead. Come on. That's what the glory was going to be that day. Come on. It is the resurrection power coming out of the glory. Come on. What I believe by the Spirit of God is there's going to be such a dimension of God's glory coming upon people, even in our midst, to where there's going to be times you walk around, as you walk around, people are going to feel the resurrection glory. Come on. Hallelujah. Could you imagine if you walk around and you walk by people in wheelchairs and you just look at them and you just walk by them and your shadow, your presence that came with you begins to impact them. And you start seeing these people walking and you're like, they kind of look like the person that was in the wheelchair. And you see the wheelchair is empty. Come on. You know what I love about that type of uh, supernatural things happening? Who's getting the glory? It has nothing to do with us. It's just there's a presence that comes about around us. And I'm telling you, that's what kind of glory is about to come up on the body of Christ. Is another dimension. Once we have an encounter with God, the encounter doesn't just leave us. We become more aware. How many say? How many want to be aware? I mean, once you're aware of something, you become more aware. Hallelujah. Come on. It's kind of like if you have an accident, you, you realize 
those cars smash up pretty quick. Hallelujah. So you become more aware. Hallelujah. Until you hit somebody, you're not so aware. So you kind of ride a little close, and you, you ride a little, you know, you push the envelope just a little bit. But once you hit them, that's when you're, okay, I'm aware now. Hallelujah. I'm aware. Praise God. And I'm telling you, it's, it's almost like, how many have ever had a husband and a wife? And I'm saying husband and wife for a reason. And you've been in the same bed together, and you don't even open your eyes, and you can sense that they're either there or not there. It's like you just have this awareness. You become sensed, sensed. You have a sensing that they're there, and you have a sensing that something is different. And what I'm saying is we're getting to a place where the glory of God is going to get to such a level that you're going to sense things by the Spirit of God, and you're going to have this awareness all around you of God's glory. Now, it's, it is the resurrection power coming out of the glory, but at the same time, do you believe that Jesus is the same today? Come on, I'm going to say some things a little different so that we can really get in our spirit that he was yesterday. Do you believe he's the same today as he was yesterday? And that he's going to be the same forever? Isn't that what our Bible says? Jesus is the same today. Come on. And I'm telling you, we are getting to a place to where a lot of the church aren't acting like it. Over and over and over again, we get all messed up by little things. I mean, if something happens that we know is a sign from God, a miracle, something taking place, the church would talk you out of it. The church would get you convinced within a couple of days, oh, it wasn't God. Somebody's glitter blew up. <laughs> and it just landed on your head. <laughs> Did you see that? That's awesome. Woo! Anyway, I didn't know that was going to happen. Hallelujah, I'm kind of messed up on it. Anyway, when I get messed up, my voice starts cracking like a little girl. <laughs> Whew. Some of the songs that play every once in a while, somebody says, is that a guy or a girl? And it's a, it's a guy, but it's when he gets in the glory, he starts sounding like a girl. And I would say who it was, but now that I've said that he sounds like a girl, I won't say it. He's a man of God, and I respect him much. He walks in the presence of God, though. He plays that piano, and once he starts getting in, he starts to sound a little funny. But I'm telling you, he knows the glory. Come on. He goes from, you know, oh, let you, we're going higher, we're going higher. Just, just starts really getting in there. Hallelujah. He's up there. He's gone. Up here, he's gone. Hallelujah. Come on. Are we ready? Hallelujah. I, I'm, I'm comfortable with my masculinity. I've used a chainsaw, a drill, and I know how to use a socket wrench, and I've even gotten the tire off with the socket wrench. I'm a man. Praise God. <laughs> oh, anyway, you know, hey, before I before I go on, I'm just having a little fun. But before I go on, if God tells you to do something, go ahead and do it. Even if even if it doesn't look like it's it's nothing to worry about. I had all pretty good tires on this van. I mean, pretty good, pretty good tires. I mean, they were all. Probably 40, 50,000 miles left on them. So, I mean, I, I, I had no idea that anything could go wrong. And Christmas Eve, uh, we had some fun. But anyway, before that, God said, weeks before that, weeks before that, he said, get a lug wrench. I'm like, I don't have one, do I? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> he knows. Why would he tell me to get one if I had one? And, you know. And every once in a while, I didn't have the money or, you know, because I've been living by faith. And uh, so every once in a while, I just get enough, and I'm like, nah, I'm going to get something else. And God said, get a log wrench. Now, first of all, how many men have ever pulled off a tire without a log wrench with a socket? I mean, it just, it's, it's a lot easier 
with that lug wrench. But, but anyway, so Christmas Eve, we're, we're you know we're 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 going down the snowy road and it's a blizzard out type of thing, and we all know about this in Springfield, hallelujah. But anyway, we're going along and all of a sudden somebody says, "I think we got a flat tire." <laughs> Wasn't a minute later, blow 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 blow. I mean, it was almost like, really, word of knowledge. No, but anyway. <laughs> If you were here last time, just shake it down. Okay. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but anyway. So anyway, so I get it out, and I got this socket set. I open it up. I got the wrench out, and I got a socket that fits it. And there's people driving by, you know. And every once in a while, you get a sweet lady. She stops, and she's alone. She needs some help. <laughs> it's like, yeah, can you, you got any muscles? Can you bust this thing open? I mean, I mean, I need some muscle, hallelujah, because this is the type of thing. You get the wrench on there. It's snowing, pouring down, and I get up on the wrench and go, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> So my 200-around body <laughs> busts my extension right off the bat. So I throw the extension in the back of the van, praising God in all things. <laughs> so now I have no room. I'm right up against the wheel. I get back up on there with my tippy toes. <laughs> I will one by one bust it. And then I get the last one off. I get the tire off. Here comes these two guys. You need some help? I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, where were you? I mean, they're like. They look like they came out of the mafia somewhere. <laughs> Need some help? I'm like, I could have used it about 10 minutes ago. And then they leave, and here comes this other guy. As I put the spare back in the, the van, he pulls up and says, do you need some help? So he put the spare back in the van for me. <laughs> Hallelujah. But the point of this whole story is not just that it's cold when it snows, but the point is, if God says do something, just do it. Do it sooner than later. <laughs> because even when he tells you, you usually got some time, but don't count on it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't count on it. Praise God. You know what I just thought of? I still haven't got a lug wrench. <laughs> Anyway, let's go on. <laughs> Do you believe the Bible? I gotta get back serious. <laughs> Anybody got a tie? Okay. Do you believe the Bible from beginning to end? Yeah, I used to wear ties all the time. They're still at the last ministry. I didn't. I didn't get my ties. <laughs> Praise God. They're with my Bible. But anyway, no, I'm just joking. Am I 14? Oh, I'm not going there. Anyway. Do you believe the Bible from beginning to end? Okay, listen to this. Do you believe that Jesus is the same? Now, what a great promise we have for healing. How many believe that? We got a great promise for healing. How many got it? We got a promise, but how many got the healing? Oh, come on, get, get into it. What about the supernatural? We got a promise of supernatural too, but we don't understand that we have a promise sometimes. If it's in here, I can believe for it. And what I'm about to propose to you is what's coming is about to change the world as we know it. The common denominator is going to be out of this world. It's time for the supernatural, the outstanding, 
to take place more than the average ordinary things. It's that ordinary only being extraordinary. And that's God manifested. And what I'm saying about this is, if he is the same today, then why can't he visit like he did Abraham, Daniel, John, Ezekiel, and many others? Why can't he visit? Why can't he come and say, hey, what's up, Jesse? What's up? Come on. Why can't he? How many have ever told a pastor, you're all excited about it? I just, I just talked to the Lord. The pastor's like, uh-huh. Don't cut your medication in half next time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. You know, and there's so many times where I have been in churches where the pastor says, anybody got anything? All minds are clear. And they're getting ready to let out. And then the, the lady that's a, a little, uh, ex, you know, eccentric, she raises her hand. Oh, pastor, I have something. And you could just see it in his eyes. Sure, what do you got? She goes, oh, I saw a glory cloud above us today as we worshiped. It was a, many colors in it, and it was just flowing down. And I know that there were healing in those colors pouring down upon us today. And I believe we're supposed to have an altar call for healing. You know what he said? He said, <laughs> he said <laughs> pretty much. He said, well, I like how that sounded, and I, I wish we would have known earlier, but time is, you know, it's it's about 12.30 now. You know what could have happened if we had that altar call? You know, and half the church is walking out of there like this. You know? You know? We just got a healing almost promise, as far as I'm concerned, from heaven. You know, you say, well, what if she didn't see it? See, I would rather say, what if she did see it? What are we going to do? Pray for a couple hours and waste some time? How many have ever wasted time praying? There, you really don't waste time praying. You might feel like you're wasting it. Hallelujah. So what I'm saying is we're getting to a place to where God's going to visit us, and we're going to know it. And the church, it, they're not going to be able to shut it down because you can't be robbed. And you know what? After the service, there were people that would go up to her and say, I love what you saw. And encouraged her. And I thank God they did because I'm telling you, that could shut you down when you get shut down by a leader. I mean, you go and tell the pastor you saw something. And they, um, it messed me up many times, pastor, not listening to me because I saw something or felt something or I wanted to do something. Hallelujah. Now, Jesus is the same today as he was yesterday, and he will be the same forever. And that makes what is available in the Bible available right now. Come on. It's available right now. Now, not just healing, laying on hands by the elders, uh, on the sick, miracles taking place, but also supernatural encounters. I believe supernatural encounters are available. It's just available for all of us. You say, well, I'm not fivefold. Well, I don't believe they were fivefold. They were all having the visitations. Come on. Hallelujah. Sometimes it's just, wow. Come on. If the Holy Spirit can hover over Mary the way the Holy Spirit hover over Mary, then the Holy Spirit can hover over any of us. Any of us. You know, that means I'm starting to get hit if I start putting words together. Hallelujah. The, yeah. Jesus was raised from the dead and spent 40 days in the resurrected body. How many believe that? He was raised from the dead, spent 40. 40. That's a funny word. He spent 40 days in the resurrected body. And he walked around visiting. 
What I'm saying these things for is I am getting you aware of the encounter of God that he's wanting to give you. You know, God spoke to me many years ago or many months ago. He spoke to me a while back. <laughs> I don't exactly know, so I'll just say a while back. It was probably in the last couple of years, if you want me to get more exact. But anyway, he spoke to me, and he said, heaven wants to encounter us more than we want to encounter heaven. Heaven is waiting to be discovered. Heaven is waiting to be discovered, not heaven there, but heaven here. Mm. Ooh. He is alive today. <laughs> what? Did I do something? <laughs> he is alive today. <laughs> Just got hot in here. He's alive. <laughs> Just shake it down. <laughs> For those who purchase this CD, Bill is now starting to get hit with the glory. And from this point forward, your religion is about to be impacted. Okay. Let me do that one more time. Now, if he is alive, <laughs> if he's alive today, then the supernatural things can take place. Come on. <laughs> Somebody give her the Heimlich. <laughs> A couple of years ago, my eyes started to be open, and I began to see angels. Now, I started freaking out on that. It's like a, a, you f angels are quick. I mean, they are. You say, oh, I heard that before. Everybody always says they see angels. Some people do. They see angels. But, uh, you know, angels like to play in your peripheral. And what I mean by that is not your straight vision, but your side vision. Like I could see that woman raised her hand over there. I could see that. So her name's Helen. I don't mean any offense by that woman. But anyway. But anyway. <laughs> My water's way under there. All that moving around I did earlier. Back there, get some. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Ha. But I started to see angels. And I'm telling you, there were times I'd see flashes of light, and I'd be like, they move. And, you know, I got to the place to where if you just sit back and relax and let them play in your peripheral, they'll have a ball. <laughs> and they'll multiply. But if you keep trying to, because by faith, I know that they're there. I could see it. I'm not just imagining. I'm seeing. Come on. I'm not seeing really with my eye. I'm seeing with my spiritual eye. And I'm seeing them having fun. And I've seen them play around during services. They have a ball. I see them go and scratch people's heads. <laughs> I've really seen that. I've seen them lay hands on people. I've seen them minister. I've seen them, I've seen them just run around. I've seen them do things. I don't even know what they're here for. 
I'm serious. And, and so I started seeing angels, and, and there was one time, I'm, I'm in the midst of a, of a service, and I'm beating the drums. I used to play bongos as, in the worship, and I'm playing them up, up a storm. I look up, and I see this angel, and he goes out the door. He's leaving the service. I'm like, well, then I ain't staying. <laughs> Come on. I see one angel, and he left. I'm like, I'm going to go with him. So I left. I, I mean, the service, I'm supposed to preach. So I'm chasing an angel down the hall. Every time I got, I got out, I could see him turn down one of the hallways. He was quick. But the thing, he could go through walls, and I couldn't. <laughs> Not yet. Hallelujah. Not yet. That's another realm of the supernatural. I'm telling you, there's a realm of the supernatural that's about to come. That's going to blow us away. But anyway, so I, I kept playing with him for a while, and and. I, I just couldn't catch him. So I went and sat in the foyer. I waited for him. And all of a sudden, here he come back with a whole group. I was like, I'm going back to the service. And you say, oh, this could be imaginary. I'm telling you, it's as real as I'm saying it. I don't, not, I, I don't talk about it unless it really happens. And I go into the service, and I'm like, I'm all excited. I'm like, I want to tell all the people. I just chased an angel out of here and all these different things. And I'm chasing down the hall. And it's like God said they won't believe it. I'm like, this is revival. We've had signs and wonders, gold dust manifest all over the place. But uh, during that time, there was hardly any gemstones that came in. But I said, they'll believe anything. He said, they won't believe it. I took his word. I was like, all right, fine. Sunday morning, he said, tell them you chased an angel. So I told the Sunday group. Man, they were all excited. They're like, yeah, praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. They're like, chase them again. Hallelujah. But let me say this. It doesn't happen all the time. It happens very rarely. Come on. But it's real. And just as I'm talking, we're getting more populated. When you talk about the heavenly realm and you talk about the substance in heaven, you talk about the, 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 the workers of heaven. They begin to come. They begin to show up. They're like sitting on the table in the back and different things. Just come to hang out. Why? Because this is like home. Come on. It's, it's the same realm. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> now, back when the revival started and I started manifesting like some of the things I'm doing right now, I had some people come to the service. They're like, I don't like that guy. He starts moaning and groaning. <laughs> really? I mean, <laughs> you think I want to look like an idiot? <laughs> you think it makes the offering bigger for me to look like a bigger fool? Come on. And what about when I'm ordering a hamburger and all of a sudden I go, ooh, ha. <laughs> that doesn't get me any help. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. I remember one time somebody, they talked to me and they didn't believe it was real, the manifestations. But they loved the services and they loved the gold dust. So they were like, well, yeah, whatever. I'll just discard all the moaning and groaning and the humping and hop, hopping and... <laughs> <laughs> that was supposed to be hooping <laughs> hooping and a hollering that's what it was supposed to be hooping but anyway so we went out to breakfast one morning we went out to, we, we went, we went out to breakfast right here in Springfield out at the other end of town and and we're sitting there having breakfast, and we order a big old meal. I mean, we ordered like we were kings. Hallelujah. He was paying, so I was, no, anyway. So, I, I'm just joking. I was hungry. I, I ordered the same way either way. But anyway, so, it was, it was just, the, we started praying over the meal, and we both started getting hit. It's like we, all we did was say, Lord, bless this meal. Let it be nurturing to our bodies. And he starts going, <laughs> And I go, what was that? 
He goes, I don't know, but I feel pretty good right now. <laughs> he didn't believe in those things. Hallelujah. The waitress got gold dust on her as she waited on us. He goes, you got glory dust on you. He goes, did you do anything with your makeup, your eye makeup? You got sparkles? Sparkles? He's really trying to be real, you know. You got sparkles on you? And she goes, what? She goes, she started thinking he's a freak. He go, no. <laughs> and he goes, you need to go look in the mirror. You're covered. It, I mean, it was like from all the way across, just covered. It looked like she had a mask on. She was a superhero. <laughs> <laughs> Refill? <laughs> she goes in the bathroom. She comes out, and she goes, why was that? What, what, what's this stuff? And we begin to tell her, and she's like, ooh. <laughs> she had tattoos all over her arms. Hallelujah. She's like, hmm, I've heard of stuff like that. Whew. She goes, I'll be back. Didn't see her again. Hallelujah. <laughs> I don't know what happened, but anyway, praise God. Where am I? Where? Where? <laughs> I'm not doing this on purpose. <laughs> you know, I was going to talk about something tonight, but I couldn't even say the word. I kept, I kept trying to do it, and I, I kept trying, and I just, it wasn't coming out right. I was like, I can't go out there and talk because I won't be able to talk. I can't talk about that. I can't even say the word right. And all it was was doing, doing. <laughs> <laughs> dunam, dunamis, dunamis, dun, dunamis. I knew it. I, I've said it a hundred times, thousand times, but I couldn't say it today. <laughs> but here I can't talk this one either. So, anyway, I said short sermon. I'm on page two. <laughs> <laughs> I started to see angels and. We seem to be okay with angels showing up and speaking to Mary and Joseph. But we don't really receive it if they're going to come and talk to us. Come on. I mean, who are we? That's Mary and Joseph, of course. Hallelujah. I mean, an angel coming and smoting Peter. Well, yeah, of course. I mean, I, all right. I'll, I'll receive that one. Okay. But, Bill, why would angel come today? We're done with that old stuff. Come on, there's a lot of preaching of that right now. We're done with the old stuff. We don't have to be excited anymore. We're just going to heaven, and that's all going to be okay. Let's see, I'll fly away. Come on. I don't know about you, but I don't want to wait for an encounter there. I want to have it right here. Now, we are okay with Paul being taken into the third heaven which call, is called the third heaven, and Paul and, and, and Elijah uh, were men like us. There's nothing much different. They just saw and heard from God and spoke it out, same as us. Different measures. We're all of different measures. Come on. Uh, God, ha <laughs> God has to interact, to interact with somebody supernaturally. He's got to. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. I loved it one time we had a guest speaker come, and I spoke most of that revival and everything. And then what happened was is a certain one of the women in the worship team used my microphone, and she would get lipstick. She had lipstick, thick lipstick, and she would sing, and she'd sing like this. But anyway, 
So I get my mic back and I'd get du- gold dust coming down as I'm preaching. And it just stuck in those holes. So, so he's coming to speak, and I'm like, I buy one of those big old colored covers, and I stick over it, you know, to hide it. <laughs> hide that ugly looking stuff, because it, you put, you get your lipstick with the gold dust, it doesn't look pretty anymore. <laughs> so I had it all covered real nice, and the minister comes, and he's preaching for a little bit, and he's like, what is this thing? He pulls it off. He's like. <laughs> Some of you were there. But anyway, he, he's, he's, show, he's showing people, and he's like, I, I said, it's gold dust. And he goes, well, that's all right. And he goes, he goes, can't be anything wrong with that. Next thing you know, he start, he, he's one of those that has it real close, too. So next thing you see him doing is going. (laughs) (laughs) He's like, well, I guess I'll be healed or something because it can't hurt you, right? I didn't tell him about the lipstick. (laughs) (laughs) But I was enjoying when he was there because he was getting all messed up. I mean, he was getting good and tipsy. He's sitting there saying the same silly stuff I was saying and just <laughs> having a good time. And what I, what I loved was we asked this guy named Kevin to come and speak about finances on a Sunday morning. Now, this is a financial teaching. We're in the midst of revival, but Sunday morning, we're going to just have a financial teaching. A little bit of gold dust. And when I say a little bit, a little bit, I believe came on the pulpit. Now, a lot of the church members try to talk everybody out of it. I don't believe that. Would, come on, I don't care if there's a little bit or a lot of bit. <laughs> I don't care if there's a whole lot or just a little bit. I believe there was enough. It wasn't just left there. I don't believe it was just left there. But even most of the leaders tried to talk about it because it wasn't me up there. Who cares? But anyway, not that I'm bitter about it. But anyway, so. He's preaching a little bit, and it's coming off his paper. You know, he changed pages like I will do someday tonight. But he'd take page, and he'd throw it down. And when he did that, gold would start flying. He was like, whoa. Well, the pulpit was there. And and let's just imagine I could go straight back. He went as far back as he could and started preaching back in the shadow. Hallelujah. (laughs) Okay, you were there that day. He's preaching on finances, and the shadow behind the pulpit, he's kind of preaching from back there a lot about finances he just go up there and try to look at his notes and then back up again because he was feeling the presence and he's one of those guys you don't see it on him he's very straight he's very normal like a lot of us (laughs) not me but you know (laughs) but but you don't know how to react till you're in it that's just it anybody who judges somebody who's in the presence of God can't judge it till they start falling in it i like to see Lori over there just start getting hit. Start preaching the word of God and start going, gee. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Joni anointing. Okay. God has to interact with somebody. He is the same today. Why should Christianity and people's experiences with Christianity be any different than they were in the Bible? Why should they be different? Why? Because we want to please everybody. We want to fill the seats. We want to be seeker friendly. We'll keep adding events till we're blue in the face. It's just so somebody can come. You don't like it? We'll change it just for you. We'll make a service for you, and we'll make a service for you that are a little bit more, and then we'll give you a service for you that are a little woohoo. <laughs> come on. Hallelujah. And you can come to your dead service, your mediocre service, or your woohoo. <laughs> As long as you tithe and you tithe and you tithe, we'll have a good time. Come on. That's the truth. You say, oh, come on. 
I haven't been in your church, so don't look at me funny. <laughs> now, there was an all night prayer. Th- there, 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 there. There was an all night prayer meeting going on. How many know this story? All night prayer meeting going on, and Peter shows up. Woo! Let her go. Peter shows up at the door, and they said, It's his angel. Come on. They're having an all night prayer meeting. Peter's in prison. They're praying all night long. They're stirred up. Come on, get her. They're praying all night long. They're praying and praying and praying, and they're like, God, come on, release Peter out of prison. Open the gates in Jesus' name. We want you to come. We want you to break him free, God. And then he's knocking off the door. And they're like. (laughs) It's got to be an angel. Who is it? Peter. Just got to be an angel. There's no way. We're praying for that, but. But, but it's more likely it's an angel than it would be getting him out of prison. He gets on in there. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> and now they're beginning to realize it's actually Peter. We're praying for you to get out of prison. Now you're here. Woohoo! Come on. Come on. I mean, what are we doing around here as a church? We pray for something and then it happens and we're like, wow. <laughs> Come on, God. Show me signs. This is what happened in Litchfield. Signs and wonders and glory. Pour it down now. What in the world is this stuff all over the floor? <laughs> Who put that there? Somebody's mocking God. (laughs) Call the team together. We're going to have a meeting. We're going to crucify them all until somebody squeals. And between us just saying that out loud and the next couple of meetings, there it was again, a couple places. It's like, what in the world? It's all over the front porch now. What in the world? (laughs) But we keep praying that prayer. Lord, signs and wonders, let your glory fall. (laughs) And then it comes and you're like, what in the world is that? How, I mean, it's like, ah, oh, let your glory fall. <laughs> Missed me. I mean, it's like we're trying to dodge it. Uh-uh. Missed me. Come back, you hear? Okay. You say, I don't know if I'm liking Bill's freedom or not. Okay. (laughs) Woo! Just shake it down. (laughs) Part of that shake wasn't me. (laughs) As God pours out greater glory, we are going to hear about greater encounters and greater experiences. Come on. Come on. Have a funeral. Come have a funeral. Get ready. Have a funeral. Come on, somebody's gonna be dying and they're gonna be laying in the casket. We're gonna be having a service. We're gonna say, God, if you will, raise them from the dead. But if that's not your will, praise God, we'll just go ahead and we're gonna l- l- release them to you. Whatever you wanna do, do it. In Jesus' name. 
So we go home. We're sitting in our bed. All of a sudden, there's a knock at the door. It's, Can I use your shower? I'm all muddy from climbing out of that grave. Come on. You say, oh, that can't happen. If, hey, if the doors can open the prison and an angel can escort a man out and they are praying for that to happen, anything could happen. If Lazarus can be dead for days and Jesus says, that, didn't I say that if you believe, you shall, you will see the glory of God. I'm telling you, anything can happen. It's time for us to have a greater expectancy that what's about to come, the greater glory that is about to come. We haven't seen it yet in the church anywhere in the world, but I'm saying it's about to come. And it's going to blow your socks right off your feet. Now, now... I'm feeling pretty good. <laughs> they will be based on, on the model of how God visited them in the Bible. You say, we're not going to get away from this. Come on. Hallelujah. I'm not saying they're going to swoop down on a Learjet jet and go, hey. <laughs> it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to associate around this. Right. Come on. I'm not asking to get off the scripture. This happened in the Bible. People had encounters with the angelic realm. People had encounters with the Lord himself. People saw the Lord. Come on. Now, I've had some unusual experiences. I wanted to get all the syllables in, all right? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to share a little bit. I'm going to share just a little bit. Now, why do we need to have some biblical, have biblical, have a big, <laughs> <laughs> how many ever watched that show where Ted was the weatherman? What was that show? Uh, Mary Tyler Moore. Sometimes I feel like Ted. When he was out there trying to read a word that he didn't understand, it wasn't the glory or anything. It's just he was dense. <laughs> but you know, he had his he had his unusual voice, you know, for the for the weather. Today, in New York, it's partly sunny. But anyway. No, I didn't in my notes. All right. There's a lot of this in my notes. I only had six pages. I'm almost done with page three, so. Why do we need to have biblical encounters when we have the Bible? Come on, I'm being religious talking. Isn't that what we hear? I'm talking like a religious person. Why do we have to have an encounter? We got the Bible. <laughs> they had encounters, so we don't have to. That's what they're saying. And that, that's their argument. We don't have to have encounters because it's already been. What about Intimacy. When you have an encounter, man, your intimacy level just went ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Woo-hoo. <laughs> Why wait for your inheritance? Come on. If you've got an inheritance coming and you've got to wait for it and you have the option to get 100% of all your inheritance, except for the death, you go ahead and say, all right. Come on. If you had to wait till you're like 50, and some of you are already there, but if you have to wait <laughs> until you're a certain age to get your inheritance, but, but then all of a sudden somebody says, you can have your inheritance right now, how many are going to take it? 
Go ahead and take it. I want my inheritance now. Why do I have to wait till I die to get it? Well, let's go. I'll go to heaven one day. I'm going get to a, get a big old mansion. Come on. I'm going to have no sickness. I'm going to be so free when I get there. So whatever. It ain't about what's here. It's about what's there. But it ain't about what's there to stay there. I want that there, here. <laughs> Do you understand what I just said? <laughs> Could you tell me what it was? <laughs> Why wait for your inheritance after we die? What? <laughs> You're going to have to separate those two. You know what I saw about the Spirit of God tonight? I didn't know why. I didn't feel too good tonight when I got here. Yeah, I, but anyway, I saw by the Spirit, I saw one of those horns like a clown horn on the side of the pulpit. In the Spirit, I saw it like, eh, eh. I thought, what's that there for? I even went, oh, boy. <laughs> Boop. All right. What do you expect when you get to heaven? The kingdom of God is at hand and is within you. I'm hungry. I'm a joint heir. Thank God that one day the fullness will come and I will be in heaven but guess what? I don't have to wait until that to get my inheritance. Oh, what a day that will be. <laughs> How many so times are we saying that? Oh, what a day that will be. One day I'll get there. It's not the, you know, we're saying it like we're going on vacation. It's like a, the, the same theme for the church for a lot of people is the same theme for Disneyland. Oh, what am I going to do when I get there? It's the same theme for Disneyland. I don't want to wait till I die. I want to right here right now. Whew. We need to have greater faith. And expectation that he is going to speak and visit us. Come on. I expect God to visit me and I expect him to speak to me. I'm available. I want you to, ha I want you to do it. Just come on now. Come on. You know, some of us as church, we get a jive with it, but we don't really get it. Come on, brother. That's a good job, but it ain't getting nothing. I want it to come right here, right now. <laughs> Heaven is real and tangible. Something I can hold in my hand. Woo -woo. I want it right here, right now. I want it my way. Isn't that the old Burger King thing? I want it my way. I want it my way. I want it right now. The glory of heaven is real, and it changes everything that it touches. Change takes place. Whoosh, change. Whoosh, change. Revelation, Revelations 19, where he is coming on a white horse with the armies of heaven. Listen to me. I see if a window was open and I could see into heaven. Oh, but heaven <laughs> had come from the Lord. If the heaven can be open, then heaven can come out. 
And if heaven can come out, it doesn't have to wait till the end. And that's what's happening here and there across the world right now is heaven's coming forth. You know, I, 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 every once in a while I get these messages from people like Randy Clark, and they're like, I just loved I was in Argentina, and God did miracles after miracles. You know, I like to hear people say, I just came back from Illinois, and there were miracles all over the place. I thank God, and I am called, and I know we're going to the nations because, man, we've had at least 20-plus invitations to go to the nations. But I'm telling you, I know we're going, but I want to see revival right here, miracles, signs, and wonders taking place in the local church, setting people on fire. Fire! I had, ex- I, had, I had an experience once. <laughs> and many times, but this one time I'm talking about. It was a, it was a throne zone, Thro- throne room, throne, throne. It was where God sits down. But anyway, but I saw in the spirit of realm, spirit, spirit of realm. <laughs> uh, I saw in the realm of the spirit this great big golden door had keyholes in it, and we opened the key. We op- we opened the key. We opened the key. <laughs> We open the door with the key. <laughs> open it. Open the door. Op- open the door. <laughs> I didn't say door. I said open the door. Open up. Anyway, so this giant golden door opens up, and inside it was bright and beautiful. Joel, Joel, Joel's, Joel's was, Joel. <laughs> Thank you. But anyway, there were jewels all over, all around, and there was a throne in the, in the, in the, in the middle. And there was jewels and, and, Jewels, jewels. There was a, there was a treasures everywhere. Just it was like it was like treasure chests opened up and overflowing all around there. And in the middle was the throne. And he was. I didn't. All I could see was feet in this vision. I could see feet by the spirit of God. And this was supernatural an encounter that God was giving me because I all kinds of things opened up after I saw this. And I could see his feet, and I knew he was sitting on there. And he was like, "There's room here. Come." And it was like, "Come and sit on the throne with him." See, we are to sit, ta ha, sit right there on the throne with him. <laughs> Did you hear that? Ha 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 ha. Praise God. Anyway, so we, we were to sit there. Sit, sit. We're to sit with him. Come on. We're going to sit on daddy's lap. Come on. That's what he is. He's our papa. Papa, papa. Hey. Hey. But anyway, so, so this is all happening in the realm of the Spirit. And God's saying, there, come, come. There's room enough for all of you. Come on. There's room enough for all of us. The door's standing up. Oh, oh, oh it's standing up. Open. <laughs> <laughs> what is it about Springfield? In Charlottesville, I'm like, praise God, everybody. Tonight I'm going to talk about, I'm real, I'm, shh. Springfield is like, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, that's all, folks. (laughs) 
Collinsville better sit on fire or something soon. Hallelujah. Anyway, but during this time, I better look. Remember, I said it was going to be a short sermon. We're already an hour. But anyway. So, as we are in this realm, God is showing me some things, and I'm seeing these things, and, and we're experiencing all kinds of stuff. I am, t- I am telling you, as, 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 as serious as I can be, the glory of the Lord and what he's about to do is nothing compared to any story I could ever tell you. I have felt his presence so much around me as I'm laying on the bed. I, a lot of times I would press in and press in and press in until the glory comes. And when the glory comes, that's when I just lay down and soak. I'm going to talk a lot about that tomorrow and the next night. And I'm telling you, I just lay there. And I just open my mouth sometimes and drink of his glory. I'm not drinking of anything else. I don't even have this water there. But anyway, I just, I just, I just drink of his glory and I just lay there and I'm like God, God just fill me up just and I don't say anything because that's whenever he can fill you is when you're quiet come on but anyway so I, I'm laying back and, and and things would happen in those encounters over and over and over again I would have these experiences where God would just come and there was one time the glory of God came so strong to where I would try to get up and when I did you could actually feel like electricity box how the power can be so uh, if you, you know anything about electricity, if you hook up a circuit breaker box and you put the neutral where the positive is or anything wrong with the neutral, if you put it wrong in any way, shape, or form, you can literally touch electricity. I mean, like the box is right there. You can go, and if you go too far, you're going to be thrown away and maybe killed. Come on. So anyway, but anyway, so I'm laying there, and all of a sudden, I start to try to get up. I lift up my head a little bit, and I hear this go, As soon as I heard that, I'm that all in the natural now. Uh, there's no glory on me at all. And I went, Bruh. I'm awake as could be. There's no presence. I'm not even feeling anything at all other than fear. I'm like, Bruh. I'm, I start, start to think, this is an old house. Maybe the outlets are screwed up. <laughs> and they're shooting at each other across the room. Hallelujah. <laughs> So I start to think about those things. I think, I'm like, hmm, this is very unusual. I think, well, there can't be that much serious. I'm on a bed. You know, I just won't touch anything metal. I won't turn on a light switch. So I go ahead and I'm like, okay, I'm just going to get up. I'm just going to get up. There ain't nothing wrong. I mean, if it's God, what's going to hurt me? Come on. Hallelujah. And if it's an electric current, I'll just go home with the, with the Lord. I mean, it's a win-win. So I'm like, <laughs> so I just set up. I'm like, Whoa. I was not back down on that bed as fast as I got up on that bed. And I was like, Bleh. I was wasted in the glory. I look over at the clock. It's 12 o'clock. I'm supposed to be picking somebody up at 1230. I'm wasted in the glory. I'm so much in the glory. I can't speak. I can't hardly move. Every time I start to try to get up, I'm just start giggling. (laughs) At 1220, I'm finally set up and I'm like, oh, boy. And in my neighborhood where I was living here in town on 9th Street, if I staggered out of my house, they wouldn't have thought nothing of it. (laughs) If I'd have went out there like this, they'd have been like, hey, how you doing? (laughs) So I was pretty messed up. I get in the car. 
And I drive. I don't know how I got there. I'm telling you, the glory of God will impact you if you really go after it. And I'm telling you in a way that you can't explain. You won't be able to tell people. Some people most people won't believe you if you told them a thousand times. And I'm telling you, even the, the enemy will try to cause you to doubt some things that I've even said tonight. But I'm telling you, it is as real as, as, I'm, as I'm looking at you. God will do things. I mean, he, why is he just going to do a little gold dust, a little gemstone for us to just go, yee He wants to impact you. When you have an encounter, when you have your personal own encounter, nobody's going to take that away from you. Come on. Get ready. As I was in the heavenly realm one time, and what I mean by that, I don't know where I was. That's the biggest revelation most of you need to know. When you're having an encounter with God, you don't know where you are. I don't know whether I went or it came down. I just know that I wasn't here no more. Hallelujah. So anyway, I'm, I'm just here. I'm just, I'm here, but I'm not here. And I'm pressing into God, and all of a sudden, I hear the singing going on. Here's what they were saying. I love it. You are good. You are wonderful. You are beautiful. And you are lovely over and over. I'm like, whoa, whoa. That's, that's, some, that's some good stuff. And in my neighborhood at the time, that ain't kind of music you hear. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, so I'm hearing this awesome, beautiful choir sounding. And it was a song of affirmation of my worthiness in God's sight. Oh, Jesus. Come on. You are worthy. Come on. You are beautiful. Listen to this. That's what you are. You need to listen to this for yourself. You are lovely over and over and over again. You are wonderful. We need to hear that. That's what God thinks of you. That's why he wants to encounter you. I want him to be waiting on you. When you walk in to pray for a little bit, when you ride in your car to go to work, I want you to just be with him and him waiting on you to get in there. Get ready. You say, what about the driving? It'll work out. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's kind of like driving some of these city streets right now. Just pick a lane and go with it. <laughs> yeah, it's wide lanes right now. Just enjoy it. Why you got it? <laughs> Hallelujah. And as I was hearing the singing, I heard by the Spirit of God, a breaking was taking place off of me. Breaking of rejection, breaking of fear, other things that only the Father's love could do. Woo! And I'm telling you, it was happening immediately in an encounter. I'm telling you, encounters change you. People talk about, I had an encounter. Well, well guess what? If you have one, you, you're going to have some fruit. Come on, you're not just going to look like a fruit. You're going to have some. Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. So many people are coming in. I had an encounter with God. Woohoo, yeah. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> I just got messed up. That's what happened. <laughs> no, that's a wino in God's glory. <laughs> Come on. If it's really happened, that's just one that's just getting a little too much to drink and not getting anything from it. Come on. It's those that get an encounter and get revelation, get some kind of soundness, get supernatural deliverance, get something in the realm of the spirit to where they see and they know something. They get fired up. Not the ones laying in the alley going, everybody loves me. In revival, you're going to get some people. That's all they're wanting, to come and get drunk. Week after week after week, they're going to be doing the same thing. <laughs> That's all they want. They come in going, bleep, bleep. They leave going, bleep, bleep. <laughs> One time, I wanted to check it out myself. I go, What's going on with you week after week? You come in going, shh, all the time. What's going on? You having experiences? You seeing things? You're going in these trances going, are you seeing anything? They're like, they're like, 
No, I don't see nothing. Just like I'm here, I'm just doing weird things. I go, really? I said, is anything changing your life, fruit, anything going on? No, same old thing. <laughs> so maybe the wires are crossed. I don't know. I'm just saying there's a whole lot of encounters you're going to have in the church in the days ahead. And a lot of encounters aren't going to be from God. Some encounters are going to be from God, but there's going to be a lot of encounters that's not going to be from God. Come on. Sometimes it's a demon. There was a time I was going to have that uh, cast out devils conference right before I left that last ministry. And I'm telling you, we was going to have cast out devils. And uh, I even said the weekend before, I said, God's already told me that he's going to hold back manifestations that are from him. So anybody who manifests when they come, they're going to be under a demon. Come on. And guess what? Guess what? They started showing up. They walk in. They walk in going. Guess what? A demon. And there, and there a whole lot of people that were manifesting week after week. It was God exposing. But you know, people are still receiving that same demon as a sign from God. Hallelujah. You know, even demons laugh when the manifestation takes place. This is extra credit. I didn't have this in my sermon. <laughs> I'm trying to get an A tonight in the realm of the Spirit. I figure I lost some points in my drunkenness. I'm trying to gain some points now. I was just kidding. I'm just joking. Don't judge me. Tell you to walk a mile in my shoes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I had that argument in the, in, in the belly from, for somebody else, and you just was getting it. Okay. Let's go on. I'm a man. <laughs> Look at Revelations. Open your Bibles tonight. I want you to feel like you've been in church tonight. So we're going to open our Bibles in closing. <laughs> Hey, I preached Bible. I just didn't read nothing. I think I just said nothing. <laughs> it rhymes with mutton. That's the weirdest dish in the world. Mutton. I mean, really? Does anybody got a cheeseburger? Okay. <laughs> Revelations chapter 2. two. Verse 7. <laughs> I'm sorry to leave. He <laughs> that hath an ear, let him hear. What the Spirit saith to the churches, to him that overcometh will I give to eat the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. He that hath an ear, let him hear. How many want to eat of the tree of life? Come on. It's available. It's available. Woo. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says. To him who overcomes will give the right to eat of the tree of life, which is in paradise. As quickly as I heard this in the realm of the spirit, as I was as I was in an encounter one time, all of a sudden everything became transparent. You could see in the midst of everything. I'm telling you, the clarity of what God's about to do upon the church is you're going to be able to see everything exactly the way it is. Come on. Are you ready? 
to everything. All the sin, all the junk. My goodness. It's like it's raining up here. All the goodness, all the glory, all the stuff, all in the midst of it. Now, I share this because I want to bring you closer to heaven. I want to bring you closer. Come on now. I want to bring you closer, man. <laughs> I'm not from Jamaica, but I want you to come. I want you to find God in a new way, man. <laughs> Back in the day, that would cost me a paycheck. Now, anything that can happen when the Lord appears, anything can happen when the Lord appears. I mean, anything. Anything. I mean, electricity, whatever. I mean, supernaturally, something's going to change on the inside of you. When God encounters you and you encounter God, it's going to change. Change. <laughs> Dang What is up? <laughs> Woo! Uh, we we, we want to. Oh boy! <laughs> I only got one paragraph left, and I got two minutes to do it. <laughs> Come on now. Anything can happen when the Lord appears. And we want the higher realms. We want the higher realms? <sighs> the higher realms of glory than what we presently have. The Lord promised that we would eat the fruit, fruit <laughs> of the tree of life. And I pray that you will make yourself available for a new realm. Get ready, get ready, get ready. <laughs> Let the windows of heaven open now. Welcome to the heavenly realm. I'm telling you, things are about to break forth. <laughs> In the glory. I'm going to go play a song now. Hallelujah. So first, we're going to talk about... Uh, just a little while, a short sermon tonight about the birthing of God's purposes. And the reason I'm talking about birthing these purposes is because these purposes have actually been released already. And I'm talking about in the realm of the Spirit, but now it's time to manifest. And, uh, and the reason I'm talking about this is because God kept bringing me across this one scripture. We can look at it real quick in Isaiah chapter 6. We're going to look at it in just a moment. But he kept taking me to this scripture, and this is not one of those hallelujah scriptures. This is not one of those scriptures to where you're like, oh, I thank God I got this scripture uh, given to me. 